Now, from the makers of Cold Water Omo, in the Missile Redeployment Department, Mrs. Peel sat reading the book marked Commission Report. Read, digest, and pass on. She'd been reading away for some hours with great interest. In the passage outside, Martha, the char lady, whispered to Bromfield. She's in there. The girl I saw at Bell Chamber's perfume shop. She's on to us. Yeah. But she's been reading the book. Then she's solving the problem for us. Is it all locked? Oh, yes. I locked it from the outside. Let me out! Let me out of here! I'll leave it to me. I shall be the first person she sees. Who let me in there? How dare you? What you... What are you? Oh. Hello, my dear. I've come to take you away. Will you come with me? Oh, yes. Yes. Of course I'll follow you anywhere. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. that can stand up to the... There is no... There is no dirt that can stand up to the cleaning power of cold water Omo. Over one million South African housewives have proved it. And Mrs. Bodington is one of them. My wash is beautiful. Mm -hmm. And it's very proud of it. My husband particularly wears a lot of white plain bowls and his clothing always looks delightful. There's nothing like cold water Omo. Yes, once an Omo user, always an Omo user. Cold Water Omo is the washing powder that cleans best. Beautiful Jill St. John knows the value of the creamy, moisturizing lather of Lux. Choose Lux to keep your skin soft and smooth. Lux, a beauty treatment as you bathe. <laughs> Episode 6, the final episode of this story, in which John Seed and Emma Peel decide that physical attraction is too basic, that mental affinity is unsatisfying, and that the only thing to do is... Love all. That had been dirty work at the Department of Missile Redeployment, largely due to a man known as Bromfield and his charming accomplice, Martha. Martha, disguised as a char lady, had been working her charms on the senior staff and managed to glean many top secrets from the top men. She'd also persuaded them to cover their tracks by confusing unwanted investigators. One of the investigators, Mrs. Peel, had succumbed to Bromfield's treatment and was now under his spell. The other investigator, John Seed, had been attacked in his apartment by Fryer, another top man who had been told to kill by Martha. Steed hadn't had a great deal of difficulty with Fryer. He'd merely disarmed him and knocked him out by throwing him across the room. It was at that point that the telephone rang. John Steed. Mother here. Yes, Steed. Why don't you report? Oh, hello, Mother. Sorry, a bit of difficulty. Uh, just had a man from the ministry drop in on me. Oh? Hot news? Uh, no, no, he's out cold at the moment. It's all extremely odd. Mrs. Peel seems to be right. Something's happened to people's glands. The fellow Fryer burst in here a short while ago and accused me of pinching his lady friend. Literally? Uh, figuratively, but I suppose much the same thing. Anyway, I think we're on to the root cause of the trouble. I'll report in the morning. Good. Come to breakfast. Eggs, bacon, champagne. Nothing like it. Mr. Bates? Oh, and well, bring Mrs. Peel, if you can find her. She's not at the ministry? No, I've just rung them. She's disappeared. Bye, Steve. The plot, as they say, or as Rosemary Z. Glaze would say, thickens considerably. Where am I? Well, that's hardly an original thing to say when coming round. You're in my apartment. Your apartment? What am I doing here? Recovering from a tiny little accident. You tried to kill me. What? What? Oh, no, don't try and move. Oh. Just lie there and recover. You uh, had a nasty fall. It was there. I tried to kill you. 
So why should I want to do that? Well, I was hoping that you'd tell me that. Try and remember what happened immediately before you came here. Uh, I, I can't. Uh, I can't. It's, it's all a blank. Uh, I remember reading a book. A book? Reading a book? Ah, yes. One of the novels of Rosemary Z. Gray, perhaps? No, no, no. I never read novels. It, it was official. Uh, a book at the ministry. Uh, the sort of book one reads, digests, and passes on. A book? Ah, yes. The book. See, he'd crossed to the table and picked up the volume he'd taken from the printing room at Casanova, Inc. Uh, got to go now, Mr. Fryer. Stay until you feel better. Bye. <laughs> In the offices of Casanova, Inc., Bromfield and Martha stood looking at Mrs. Peel, who was sitting in an easy chair with a dazed expression on her face. She smiled up at Bromfield adoringly. What are we going to do with her? You with Mrs. Peel, Martha? Why, nothing. Nothing? Nothing at all. You see, it won't be necessary. She'll do anything for me. And to my dear. Oh, yes. Yes, anything. You see? She loves me. Don't you, Mrs. Peel? Oh, yes. She loves me to death, in fact. Open the window, Martha. What? Do as I say. Open the window. Oh, very well. Now, Mrs. Peel, my dear, give me your hand. That's right. Now, come along and have a good look at the view. There we are. Beautiful, isn't it? Isn't it beautiful, darling? Yes. Yes, it's beautiful. And beautiful things should be enjoyed to the full. So I want you to step out onto the window ledge and take a closer look. Yes. Yes, all right. Then I shall ask you to do something else. Come along. That's it. What must I do? The reason for asking you to do this is that I can never see you again. Oh, no. It's true. So there's no point in continuing to live, is there? No. Oh, there's no point. Now take your time. But you can't come back in here, so off you go then. Leaving Mrs. Peel literally teetering on the ledge outside the wide window... Bromfield returned to Martha and the large map of England, which was spread out on the desk. Now, Martha, are you sure Fryer's information was correct? There's no reason to doubt his accuracy. He was such a thoroughly hooked as a rest. Hmm. <laughs> How did it feel to have the whole of the ministry in love with you? Hmm? I can take it or leave it. They were all so boring. Did they didn't make you feel proud to have so many worshippers? <sighs> Not when I knew they couldn't help themselves. Never underestimate the power of the written word. Look at this book. It looks so large, a tome. Uninteresting and requiring a great deal of concentration. <laughs> Those poor fools will never know what hit them. Oh, darling. No one is as clever as you are. You can make anybody do anything. Hmm. Only with this to aid me. Bromfield opened the book, revealing a tiny mechanism in the back cover. This? Little gadget, those little microdots, an unbeatable combination, subliminal indoctrination. They read the words, but this message is between the lines. I must say you've done well, Martha. Is there anything else you want me to find out? No. Now, here on this map is marked the new security system in full. It's all complete. We fulfilled our promise. And when do we get the money? As soon as we deliver this information. Where's Athene? Athene? Yes, sir. Yes, Mr. Bromfield. I'm right here. Uh, let's start getting the stuff out of here right away. Yes, sir. You leave everything to me. I'll say to it all. Well, what about her outside the window? Oh, she's just waiting for the final order to jump. All right, Mrs. Peel. I'm going now. When I say jump, my dear, be a good girl and jump. Right. Jump. <laughs> John Steed, heading for Casanova, Inc., had parked his car and was walking down the road when he looked up and saw the strange sight of Emma Peel on the window ledge. He got himself into the building in double-quick time and headed for the offices. 
Martha and Bromfield left by one door as Steve belted into the room by the other. Tearing across the room, he seized Mrs. Peel by the belt of her costume and jerked her back into the room. Ah, come back in here. What the devil do you think you're doing? Is this a publicity stunt or something? I have nothing left to live for. It's the worst thing that's ever happened to me. He has left me. Who? Oh, Bromfield? Of course. You, you, you're in love with, with him? Desperately. Infatuated? Or indoctrinated? You know, the trouble with you, Mrs. Peel, is you read too much. And the trouble with you, Steed, is you interfere too much. John <laughs> Steed dived at Bromfield's legs and the shot went wide. Steed struggled with him on the ground, grabbed him by the hair and crashed his skull against the metal filing cabinet. How dare you? How dare you lay hands on him? Hey, hey I'm on your side, remember? Let go! Let me go, you brute! If I do, will you stop this nonsense? No, I'll scratch your eyes out! Oh, very well, then, on your own head, dear. He grabbed his bowler, which had come off in the struggle, and bopped Mrs. Peel smartly over the head. I know love is blind, but this is ridiculous. Steed placed Mrs. Peel in a comfortable chair and set about examining the pile of books in the corner. He found the mechanical device in the cover and, holding it up to a mirror, examined it through a powerful magnifying glass. He managed to read... You will fall in love with the next person you see. Hmm. Well, if one of these little mechanisms works on a person reading a book, I wonder what effect half a dozen of them will do. Indeed. Steed, my dear boy, congratulations. So, Bromfield and the woman are in custody, and you cleared the whole matter up as usual. Brilliant, dear fellow. You're brilliant. Oh, isn't he? Isn't he just too wonderful, Mother? He is. An extraordinary, talented, charming man. Oh, thank you, Mother. Thank you, Mrs. Peel. Oh, Steed, I do love you. And so you should, Mrs. Peel. How I've managed to cultivate such charm, Steed, such panache. Well, I thought it's such a waste that Bromfield's invention should be thrown away. I had a few of the gadgets made in the coat buttons, you see. Two on my suit, four on my waistcoat. A bit flashy, but uh, effective. Uh, take a good look, Mrs. Peel. Oh, Steve. Steve, you are beautiful. Much more effective than Midsummer Night's Dream. Shakespeare brought up to date, in fact. Give me your hands if we be friends. And Mother shall restore amends. Open the other bottle of champagne, will you, Mrs. Peel? <laughs> Out of the blue comes a new way to fight tooth decay for Keats. New fluoride for Keats toothpaste. It's the clear blue way to fight tooth decay, and it's the best anti-decay toothpaste around. New great tasting for Keats toothpaste. The clear blue way to fight tooth decay for Family fluoride for Keeps toothpaste. There's no dirt that can stand up to the cleaning power of cold water Omo. If you use cold water Omo, it comes out very, very easily indeed. Says Mrs. Sutherland of the Inneken. Once an Omo user, always an Omo user. It cleans best. The Avengers. Every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers, brought to you by the makers of Cold Water Omo.